The common types of pliers are used for holding, for bending thin material, and for cutting wires. Pliers are one of the hand tools in universal use. They are used by all and probably misused by most mechanics. They have certain definite jobs to do and are not to be thought of as the answer to all problems. When held in a strong, inexperienced hand, they can easily do more damage than good. It is a mistake to try to make pliers do the work of every other tool in the kit. How often have we seen a man misuse a pair of pliers when he should have used a wrench and leave the trademark of a poor mechanic? Now that we've seen a few of the misuses of pliers, let's take a quick look at the proper uses of the different kinds. The lineman's pliers, or side cutting pliers, for instance, provide an all-in-one means of cutting, bending, and twisting electric wires. This neat splice should prove to you the value of the lineman's pliers. Diagonal cutting pliers are used by electricians for assembling switchboards and for similar types of work. They will cut wires in nearly inaccessible places. Of course, the material to be cut must always be softer than the pliers or the jaws will be ruined. Notice the parallel vice grip of the Bernard parallel jaw pliers. These pliers with long, thick jaws are used for holding pieces of stock where a good grip is necessary and where deep teeth marks on the stock are undesirable. An added feature is the strong cutting jaw located on the side of the pliers. Needle nose pliers are made with long jaws and are used for all types of delicate work. They should not be used for heavy stresses or as pry bars. These pliers were ruined through such misuses. There are many variations of the needle nose pliers. Here, one type, the round nose, is being used to form circular ends on wires which are to be fastened to the switch with screws. After repeated use, if care is not taken, the jaws of your pliers are apt to fill with grease and dirt. This greatly lessens their gripping efficiency. For the safety of the tools themselves, of the material, and of the user, cleanliness is a must. All pliers are measured by their overall length. This type 
ranges from 5 inches to 10 inches. As with all tools, pliers are made in the right size for the right job. The screwdriver is a hand tool designed for turning slotted objects, but it is misused in a thousand other ways. It generally consists of the handle, the clamp or ferrule, and the blade. The blade parts are called the bit and the shank. The wood, plastic, or metal handle is made to fit the hand. The ferrule fits over the handle, protects it, and clamps it tightly to the blade. The size of a screwdriver is determined by the overall length of the blade and the width of the bit. One of the first things to learn about using screwdrivers is that it is always dangerous to hold the job in your hand. It is better to place the work in a vise or on a flat surface, which will bear the pressure needed to turn the screwdriver. Let's see what happens when the bit is too large for the slot in the screw. It is evident that the slot is stripped, leaving the telltale trademark of a poor mechanic. This is what happens if the bit is too small. A ruined tool, the result of not using the right size for the job. The screwdriver bit should occupy at least 75% of the slot but must never extend beyond the edges of the screw, as it will mar the work. This screwdriver fits the slot perfectly, but the blade is too short. Always select a screwdriver that can be guided or supported by one hand while being turned by the other. Make sure the handle, the blade, and your hands are free of grease or moisture. When loosening a stubborn screw, leverage is not to be gained by using a pipe wrench on a screwdriver. True, it might do the job, but it will chew up the screwdriver shank. Always use a square shank screwdriver and obtain the needed leverage with an open end wrench. Often a mechanic will come across a screw that is almost inaccessible. Then he should use an offset screwdriver. It is designed to turn screws that cannot be reached with a straight screwdriver, the right tool for the job. Because of need for greater safety and speed, modern industry has introduced this new Phillips-type screw head. The Phillips-type screwdriver, which has a four-fluted bit ensures a better fit and a continuous grip in the screw slot. Using too large a bit will round the edges of the slot. Too small a bit is too weak, and the probable result is breakage of the screwdriver. Match your screwdriver bit to a perfect fit in the screw head.
This is the way the tool is designed to work and is the way it works best. For light work, a spiral ratchet screwdriver will drive or will remove screws faster and easier. The design of the driving end permits the use of various sized bits and attachments. Occasionally, special screws or fittings are used to prevent curious people from tinkering. Frequently, the span fitting is used for this purpose. Notice the specially designed bit of the span screwdriver. Only this type of bit permits removal of the span fittings and screws. Don't attempt to use a screwdriver as a chisel. Here's why. A broken handle. Don't use a screwdriver to pry things. Here's why. A bent blade. Don't use a screwdriver as a scraper. Here's why. A rounded point. A good mechanic always keeps his tools in good repair. After continued use, your screwdriver will show signs of normal wear. For the sake of safety, don't wait until the tool becomes dangerous. A screwdriver is one of the tools which should be kept correctly ground. Only a poor mechanic grinds a screwdriver down to fit a particular job. This ruins the tool for the purpose for which it was designed. The only reason for grinding is to restore the original shape of the screwdriver. Well-kept tools are cleaned before being put away. A thin coating of oil should be applied to those which may not be used again for some time. This prevents rust. And finally, don't leave plastic handles on hot surfaces or near flame. Many people wonder if plastic handles will burn. Now you know.